Okay guys, welcome to another video. In this video, we want to talk about the top five quotes from Dr. Jekyll, well, the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. As always, subscribe, like, share the video, follow me on Instagram. Let's begin. So, the first quote that I want to speak about is from chapter one. And the quote reads as follows. Guys, this is my copy and I'm on page five. Guys, the quote reads as follows. Utterson says that I incline to Kane's heresy. Who's Kane? It's not Kane from WWE. It's Kane from the Bible. Guys, Abel and Cain. Cain was the brother, the son of Adam. And Cain was the brother who murdered his brother Abel. He was the first person to commit a murder. Uh, he did it over jealousy. Now, for Utterson to say that he inclines, inclines means you are drawn towards it, you like it towards Cain's heresy. From the very beginning, it shows that Utterson isn't your conventional hero, isn't your conventional main character. There's something a little bit strange, there's something a little bit dodgy, if you like, about the character of Utterson, because he's inclined to doing wrong. He's inclined to doing bad things. That's my first important quote, is I incline to Cain's heresy. That's from the very first page. So if you in, so if in your exam, you get a question about the character of Utterson. Please use that quote. Utterson, yes, is a good guy, but Utterson has two sides, just like Jekyll and Hyde, just like every other character in this book. All right, guys, quote number two. Um, quote number two is when Jekyll, sorry, when Hyde murders Saddam vs. Karu. The quote reads as follows. He clubbed him to the earth. Guys, clubbed, there's some grass over here. When he clubbed somebody, it's not a tap. He full swing, smashed him straight into the ground. He clubbed him to the earth. It's like he hit him so hard, he went through the floor. That's how badly Hyde beat Saddam vs. Karu. And the next moment, without even thinking about it, ape-like fury. Hyde is constantly equated, described to ape, to monkeys. Guys, look, this is where Darwin's theory of evolution comes in. Stevenson and many other writers were leaning more towards science than they were towards religion. So if we're saying that Hyde is like an ape, we are saying, if you believe in Darwin's theory, if you, you are saying that Hyde is not a fully evolved human being. He's stuck somewhere on that line. Therefore, his behavior is like an ape. His behavior is subhuman. But you can flip that argument. If you're saying that Hyde is, is stuck on that trajectory of becoming a human, you can almost say, that every single character in this book has Hyde in them. Because if you believe in evolution, then you believe that just like Hyde is evolving, you also evolved from Hyde. Ape like Fury, he was trampling his victim underfoot. Got the important change here. When he tramples over the girl, it was done calmly. When he tramples over the dam with Karu, it was done with ape like Fury. You might want to compare how the character of Hyde has gradually got more and more evil. Those are my first two quotes. Quote number three is from chapter, the chapter Incident at the Window. In this copy, guys, is page 35. I'm going to read the quote out to you guys and then we'll talk about it. The middle one of the three windows was halfway open and sitting close beside it, taking the air with an infinite sadness like some disconsolate prisoner, Utterson saw Dr. Jekyll. It's a massive quote. Of course, we can't use all of that quote for our exam, but we can discuss and pick out the parts we need. Guys, first one, I want to picture this. The middle one of three windows. So you got window, window, window. The middle one is half open. Guys, I want to talk to you about this, about how those windows symbolize the character of Jekyll. You've got Jekyll as one window. You've got Hyde as one window. And the one in the middle, the halfway open, You've got Jekyll in his current state. He's not Jekyll, he's not Hyde. He's stuck in between. That's how I would speak about those windows. Talk about how those, how those windows symbolize the character of Jekyll. One window is Jekyll, the other is Hyde. The one that is halfway open symbolizes how his character is almost stuck in between two different realities. And guys, the last part, he looked like some disconsolate prisoner. He's a prisoner in his own home. You want to make the point, Jekyll is a prisoner because he's stuck in his house, he's stuck in his body. He's stuck because he has no freedom. The very reason he created Hyde was to be free. 
but it backfired on him. It's a lesson that human beings should not be trying to create other human beings. And this is what a lot of 19th century text talked about. Frankenstein, same lesson in that book. All right, guys, quote number four. Let's look at the Lanyon's narrative. Now, just before Jekyll transforms in front of Lanyon, just before um, he becomes Hyde and Hyde becomes Jekyll, he says to Lanyon, he says, Lanyon, will you be wise? Will you be guided? Will you suffer me to take this glass in my hand and to go forth from your house without further parley? Or has the greed of curiosity too much command of you? Page 53. I want to speak about the last part of the quote. The greed of curiosity too much command for you. See, you say Lanyon, has your greed of curiosity, has your... Okay. Has your... I don't know what's going on there. Has your thirst for curiosity, has your thirst for knowing things that you shouldn't know, gotten so much that you're going to find out what I'm talking about. Jekyll here, he touches upon the idea of human nature. Human beings, by nature, arguably, always want to know more. They are always selfish. And this is what exactly he's playing on. But look what he says, guys. The curiosity has too much command for you. Curiosity controls him too much. We are controlled by our desires. Our desires are not controlled by us. And what does Lanyon do? Lanyon ultimately gives in to his desires. So this quote is very important in showing man's nature. Why does Jekyll create Hyde? Is it because of the greed of curiosity? Finally, guys, quote number five. Um, quote number five, I want to talk about page 55 which is Henry Jekyll's full statement on the case um, I reached years of reflection and began to look around and take stock of my progress and position in the world I stood already committed to a profound duplicity of life that quote profound duplicity of life is very important Jekyll is saying just like every other person I led a double life, I had a duplicity of life where one side was good, the other side was bad and what happened was he was struggling to control that in one being. Guys, it's that example, somebody on social media might present a particular way of living but in real life they're completely the opposite. It's like they've got a hide on social media and a Jekyll in real life. That's exactly what Jekyll is talking about. He felt as though he had two lives, one for the people doing charity and doing good deeds, the other was his evil, sinister side. But because he couldn't control it, because he was weak and because he couldn't control it, he, what did he do? He created Hyde. So guys, that quote, duplicity of life, is very important in showing why he does what he does and it almost justifies it. All right, guys, those are my top five quotes from Jekyll and Hyde. Use them in an essay. Send me your essays. I'll check them out. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for following. Like, share, subscribe. It's been Mr. Everything English.